What about the character? Amen. You know the man's character. Up. You look at the outside, but you don't know the inside. And that's, what, oh, that's what these people Amen. are doing. They're looking at these longs and these bishops and, oh, I got a big old car and a car bigger than the church. And, you know, and they're caught up in that, but they're not getting caught up in Jesus. Amen. 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 For the word of God thus far, and too, we just thank the Lord for His sweet spirit. Amen. Yes. Thank the Lord for being in the true church. Amen. Yes, we can profess and proclaim that this is a church with true character. Amen. A true church, praise the Lord, that God has set up. Yes. Amen. A lot of these uh, false preachers are running, but God hasn't sent them, and that's why they don't have the character. Amen. God don't call people who lack virtue, who lack moral, who lack, you know, um, morality. Praise the Lord. They have to have true character. They're going to be willing to be obedient to all of God's word and be obedient to everything that he um, commands for them to do. Praise the Lord. And I want to go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you know, in our um, reading text. Amen. For reading our reading text in Ephesians 5 and 14, it says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Amen. We are in an evil time when, and again, it was brought out, I believe, Sunday or um, Sunday morning. They will call evil good and good evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. They'll call what we're doing. Oh, you guys are wrong. You're hating. We're, we're loving you. Amen. They, this love they call hate. But then they hate their brothers because they won't tell the truth. Don't false prophets hate you because they won't tell you the truth. You love somebody, tell them the truth. Tell them, tell them Amen. something like that you're living a life of sin. That it's not okay. Tell the lesbian that, you know, you are a woman. God did not make a mistake. You're not a, wo a woman and a, a man in a woman's body. You are a woman in a woman's body. Amen. And you just have a corrupt mind. If somebody has deceived you, yeah. and not only uh, is your mind corrupt, but it's mentally disturbed. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. But uh, I was going over to Romans, so Romans chapter, First Corinthians chapter ten. Amen. We were the word of God was written for our example and admonition that we should not learn to do after what our forefathers done. Amen. We want to teach our children here, and you know, not just our children here, but all the children I come in contact with. Every opportunity I get, I try to teach them or talk to them about the Word of God. Because they always have questions. Children I ask questions about the veil cover where adults will just stand there and look or give me, look at me all cockeyed. But a child will come out and ask a question. I thank the Lord for the hum humility in children and honesty in some children. Amen. Because they will come out and ask and that's our opportunity. And if they're teenagers and they're old enough to understand the Word, and even if they're not, I try to break it down into their um, way they can understand it. Because... We are given this word of God to go forth and live and be obedient. You know, we see how in the scriptures it teaches how our forefathers, how people, even our, our parents and our, their parents, how they didn't obey the word of God and the troubles and things they faced in their life because they were not obedient to the word of God. But we have to be obedient to God in all things. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says in verse 5, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Because they didn't obey all of God's word. In verse 6 it says, Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. And that's how Evangelist Wagner was bringing out women, you know, and men. Man. They're not only, like you say, luckily, thank God that that woman was lusting after men or was had her mind on a man. But see, the sad part, now you got men lusting after men, women lusting after women. Amen. Amen. Say he's not, well, that's, he's not pleased with that. That's, you'll be over, like, just like they were overthrown in the wilderness, you're going to be overthrown in this day and time. Now these things are our example to the attempt we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for an example, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Amen. So these were written for our examples, and even now, as we go forth preaching and teaching the people about the word of God, the truth of God's word, so that you'll learn. And we go to scripture. Evangelist uh, Smith brought out, she went to Romans chapter 1, how they chose to serve the creature more than the creator. Amen. God said that homosexuality and lesbianism is a sin. Amen. But you're going to serve the creature, the man in the pulpit, who don't know A from B or don't know East from West because he, he don't know the Word of God. 
Amen. And you're going to believe him and worship him rather than the creator who said it's a sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I thank the Lord again that we have the truth of God's word. I pray those that are watching by way of YouTube will take heed and will humble yourself. You have to humble your spirit. You have to be renewed in your spirit. Amen. In the spirit, in the spirit of your mind. And evangelists, um, will turn it over, but evangelists on um, are brought out how how in the beginning, and when she started speaking, how that how you gonna say you're saved or I want I want Jesus, but I still want to do all the sinful things I did before I got Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're still doing those things and you don't have Jesus, you need all to right. Amen again. Be cleaned up, renew your mind. Amen. When you've got to change your mind and be a different person. Amen. God said He will clean you up and change you and make you new. Amen. He's not gonna continue, like he says, you can't put a new wine in the old vessel. All right. Amen. It's no good. Amen. So he's not going to, the Holy Spirit not going to dwell in the unclean temple. Amen. 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 And I'm, I'm going to go to Romans 13 and 10. Amen. Just to let you know that ain't long, you know, he has no love. Because he doesn't even love himself. If he loved himself, all he trying to be something other than himself. God made him a man, so why are you trying to be a woman? So obviously, a lot of people flocking him don't love themselves. So they got 25,000 people, people don't love themselves. Like, but God's love is not how man sees love. See, God loves, corrects, rejects, and protects. But see, uh, you know, a long he's not doing none of this. He's not correcting nobody. And he's showing that rejecting those people who refuse to accept correction. And he's not protecting them. How are you going to be a, a messing over these little boys and you're supposed to be protecting them? You know, I tell you, you know, you're supposed to be protecting God's word, for which you're not even teaching to begin with. But in Romans 13 and 10, it was, it, it's very clear. It says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. No ill. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And he, he and it's obvious that he, he don't believe in the law. It's obvious that he don't because he's sure not fulfilling it because he's doing evil. He's abusing himself and mankind. He's abusing his children. He's stealing from the people. Most importantly, he's lying to the people because you can't steal from them unless you get them to believe the lie that you tell them. Amen. So Amen. that money's a big, big liar. You gotta stay away from these people. God said the boy these wicked people. You don't want to be about anybody, anybody that's a liar, I tell you. One thing I learned, you don't want to be around a liar or a thief. I tell you. You are those two first people don't want to be around. And if those spirits do rub off. You think they don't? He probably got them people in the church lying on their taxes, lying everywhere they go. Yeah. Thinking that, that, oh, we got to be wise as a certain how said that. That don't mean go around lying and cheating. So uh, that's not being wise. So we, we have to be careful that we, we, we're following somebody who has the character of Christ. And A. Long and the T.D. Jason, all these people, Joyce Meyer, do not have the character of Christ. They don't because it's proven by the Word. Just line them up with the Word and you'll see. Because God never took. He always gave and he yes. gave and he gave and he gave. He gave to his last breath. What is any wrong given? Nothing. He's always taken from the people. So if you, you watch a person. A person has a character of Christ. is always in the giving mode. And, and to, to correct is to give. That, that's tough love on them when you correct it. Yeah. And, you, and you're not going to back down. So that's the problem with these children today. Because the parents want to be the children's friends. Yes. That's, right. that's the problem today. Yeah. And it, it, it's just a perpetuating itself all into the true church. You want to be friends with them. You know how a pastor not to be a friend with their congregation? He wants to be an overseer and leader like, like, a, like a father figure. You know? Yeah. And that's why I hate all these children's trust has been tampered with now. God will have to really do a great thing in them for them to restore trust. You know, which is a basic human need that you need to, to get you back to God. Because we've been separated from them. You need that trust to come back to God. You know, so I, I really can't stand an individual like that. Can't pray for them because they don't want to be prayed for. But uh, if they want to humble themselves and they want to repent, that's on them. But I ain't going to get in the way. That's between them and God. So I tell you, sometimes you go too far, you can't come back. Because in the Bible, he said uh, he was praying for that he get his hearing back. He said it was too late. And sometimes it is too late for certain individuals because they're going too far. But for the people that are in this congregation, it's not too late for you yet, hopefully. Unless they have to to me that they're homosexuals too. Yeah. But uh, you need to, it might be a little too late for you, but somebody in there needs to hear this word and needs to come out and, and hearken to God's word because it's not too late for everybody because God still has us preaching and teaching. Somebody don't want to be caught up in this wicked lifestyle. Amen. So we got to keep on preaching and teaching and not give up. And, and we're not going to give up because our bishop teaches to be a good soldier. 
Yeah. We be real. Just know that we're not going to give up in the face of no adversity. So we're going to keep on fighting. Amen. Should God take us home or split, you know, split?